Moving over to the markets now. This week we were joined on Wednesday by Luca Beckman from Central Valley Ag. We began our discussion by getting an update when it comes to a harvest up in Luke's region of the state. Well, you uh, reside up the Elgin, Nebraska area. I'm curious as we uh, open up today's broadcast and conversation, how's harvest progress in your neck of the woods? We had a nice rain uh, a week ago, uh, pretty general across the northeast part of the state. Uh, slowed things down across the weekend and a little bit of a slow start to start this last week. Uh, but things are firing back up. I think soybean harvest, by the time you know uh, producers see this, uh, will be going uh, pretty actively across the footprint and a lot of high moisture corn starting to come out. So I'd say about 15% of soybean harvest uh, is probably complete in the eastern third of the state. Uh, corn harvest is still just starting to get going, less than 10% complete at this point. Uh, yields, as you would imagine, are pretty variable this year, uh, just with uh, where the rains hit, uh, some of the different stresses you know, that this crop had to endure. So uh, we'll certainly know more as we continue to progress through harvest, um, but a little bit of everything as we get going. Yeah, appreciate that, Luke. Well, as we jump into uh, the conversation, let's kind of tackle the corn market first. As you look at the charts, as we put a, prepare to put a bow on the month of September, pretty much the entire month we've been stuck in this sideways trend, but that goes back to uh, August. Your thoughts on the corn market? Uh, are we, are we going to be stuck here through the entire harvest season? I don't think so, Bryce. Uh, I think this market's probably working on some sort of a pre-harvest low. You know, seasonally, the corn market does find a, a low kind of in this period between Labor Day and uh, the middle of October. So optimistic that maybe we're finding that here. Obviously, we've got a big report coming out on Friday this week in the September stocks report. You know, by the time they see this, we will have seen the, the results for that. Uh, probably not too many surprises in that report, though. It's held uh, quite a few surprises in recent years, uh, most of those being bullish. And so uh, the June stocks report, if you remember back to the June 30th uh, planted acreage and stocks report, that was a bullish surprise. Uh, the wind was kind of taken out of the bull's sales that day because we did find more corn acres. Uh, but the stocks data was friendly in June. Uh, now history doesn't necessarily suggest that just because the June report was friendly that we get a bullish report in September. Um, but it does imply maybe that feed usage is running a little bit higher. So we'll see what that report says on Friday. They can also use that data to go back and adjust the size of last year's crop. And so you know that report uh, potentially uh, could trim the size of this last year's carry out somewhat. That's the expectation coming in. Is it going to be enough to impact the market? Doesn't feel like it. You know, we've got to carry out at 2.2 plus billion bushels for this crop that we're harvesting right now. And so we're going to need some help in some different areas. Certainly uh, a yield cut um, would help. You really need to get that national yield closer to 170 bushels per acre to try to get this carry out closer to 2 billion which is going to be a much more manageable number. Uh, we've got stocks to use at 15% at and higher. I mean, that's really just not a bullish scenario. It tells you we've just got too much corn relative to the demand base that we have. Uh, and the demand issue really has been around uh, exports. Uh, exports last year were down over 800 million bushels. That's, a, that's close to 33% uh, year over year. So uh, the demand situation just not as robust for corn that looks to carry into this next year. And if we're going to hit the export numbers that the USDA has forecasted today, we're probably going to need a little bit of an issue to develop in South America uh, through the next nine months with their growing season. That's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up the corn front, Luke. How about on soybeans? Is the story any different over there? It is. So the soybean situation certainly uh, is friendly or has the potential to be friendlier. As we look at the new crop carryout projections, uh, the thing it's just tighter. You know, we've got a 220 million bushel uh, projection by the USDA today. Uh, we've also got that stocks report on Friday the 29th, uh, which will finalize the carryout for the old uh, year that just wrapped up the 22-23 marketing year. Uh, as we look at the soybean situation, uh, the USDA has already accounted for a weaker demand situation looking at new crop. They've cut the export number substantially since we saw the initial estimates in May. And so they've kind of accounted for this and they've done so because of two reasons. One, we don't have the acres uh, that we do in the corn market and the yield has started to slip a little bit closer to 50 bushels per acre, potentially could be cut uh, to less than 50 bushels per acre. So carryout situation certainly tighter in the soybeans. If we have a, a potential story in one of the two commodities, I certainly like soybeans better. 
but a lot of that's probably going to depend on how the South American growing season gets started. Uh, how many acres are they able to get into the ground? We know that number grows every single year. Um, so really want to pay attention to South America as we get into December. How does some of that uh, weather look? What kind of an export program uh, could the U.S. Uh, get into if they do have some issues? Because today, uh, not off to a great start as we look at the current marketing year uh, for soybean exports. So that's really the story in beans is just uh, balancing where's this supply going to come in with the yield and then how does South America get started as they plant their soybeans this fall. Well, Luke, I kind of opened up the broadcast talking about harvesting and want to begin to wrap up our conversation on that note. When it comes to unsold bushels in particular, what kind of suggestions or things uh, do you want to offer to our viewers today they should be thinking about? Well, one variable that's different, Bryce, that we haven't had to deal with for a while is just the interest rate environment being higher. Uh, producers need to keep that in mind as they think about the opportunity cost associated with keeping bushels, unsold bushels in storage, whether that's commercial storage or on-farm storage. Uh, keeping a soybean on-farm or in commercial storage is going to cost you 10 cents a bushel per month in interest alone. Uh, that doesn't count the cost to you know, run the fans, to the, the in and out cost, the shrink. Uh, so producers really need to be aware of that. It's going to cost a lot of money to store, especially soybeans uh, on farm. And so you need to have a good carry built into the market. And the only way to take advantage of carry is to sell it. So just selling spot grain out of storage is not going to be a good strategy this year. Um, basis is really going to be defensive if, when we see those rallies because there is a fair amount of unsold grain out in the marketplace. So I think if we can see some strength develop in corn and soybeans, maybe more so on the bean side, producers get a chance to sell $13 cash at the processor or the elevator for fall beans. That feels like a sale to me. Uh, it's just going to take a lot of money, a lot of appreciation in this market to justify holding grain in space this year. So be aware of that. Be aware of your interest costs as you consider that. Uh, if you must or don't like the price, uh, I certainly don't mind selling re-own strategies. Uh, re-owning some of these commodities on paper is going to be a cheaper alternative to putting uh, bushels in space, especially when it comes to soybeans. Fortunately, there is some good carry in the board for both corn and soybeans today. So if you're a hedger, uh, that's going to benefit you. There should be enough money in the carry, in the spreads uh, to offset your interest costs. So uh, be aware of that. Take advantage of that if you're a short hedger and roll those positions forward if you have uh, grain in space. 